back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, so I am here today to do some book reviews and this kind of mismatch is going to be all of Sanderson's free novellas that you can get on his website and also mitosis. So this is kind of a joint review of four of his different short works. Those four being mitosis which is a novella that slots in between Steelheart which is his YA series and Firefight which is coming out next year and then I'm also going to be reviewing Centrifugal which is a short story that he wrote back in 1994 so it was actually his first ever work that he submitted to a competition. Then also Defending Elism which is more of a sci-fi short story and can be found free on his website as with the Centrifugal. And finally I Hate Dragons which was part of a writing exercise that he did and is a short story again that you can find on his website. So starting off with Mitosis. Mitosis, as I've said, it's the novella that slots in between Steelheart and Firefight, so it is set in the same world as Steelheart, and that is a kind of weird reflection of the modern day world where epics have taken over. Epics are essentially people who have basically got superpowers and there are all sorts of different types, there are all sorts of different people with all sorts of really cool magical, awesome, creepy things that they can do. And this is a short story that was available in the US quite a long time ago, but has only recently in the last few months become available in the UK. And so as soon as it did, I got it on my Kindle and I read it and I really enjoyed it actually. I ended up giving it a three out of five stars because it is a novella, it's quite short, there isn't much fleshing out. But the storyline was really funny and there was still all of the kind of wit and humour that we have in the Seal Heart series, that was carried straight over into Mitosis. Basically Mitosis revolves around the idea that Mitosis himself is an epic, he is an epic who can duplicate himself and split himself apart which is quite a cool power and our main character David has to try and defeat this epic and try and find out his weakness and discover how he can stop this epic from taking over the town of New Cargo where they will live. It's quite a fun story, it's very fast, action packed, very easy to get through. If you like the Steelheart series I have no doubt that you would enjoy this. It's great to have a little bit more in the epic world because the powers and ideas are really cool. It is very short, it isn't a long read, it's very easy to get into and yeah, I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Moving on to Centrifugal then, this is a story that Sanderson actually wrote back in 1994 and it's very very quick to read. Basically only took me 5 or 10 minutes, very very short, very sweet and snappy. But it shows the beginnings of Sanderson's writing, you really get to see how he started out thinking about writing. It's not his polished work, it's not his best work, it's definitely very far behind the things that he's published since, but because it was his first work it was really really cool to see how his style has changed from what he was originally writing to how it's evolved to the awesome, really complex and interwoven plot lines that he has today. From the point of view of someone who is currently at university and studying, he actually wrote this story whilst he was at university and I would say it's a pretty good story compared to a lot of other university students who I know. So I would definitely say that it's still got merit today. And he obviously won a competition with it so clearly someone liked it and thought it was a really good story. Basically the story is all about the idea of harnessing a supernova. There is this huge supernova that people have been predicting is going to happen for over 3,000 years and there's a certain family who all of their lives have been dedicated to the day when this is going to happen and dedicating so much time and resources and everything has gone towards making sure that when this day comes they will be able to harness the power from it. It's a very very fast read, it doesn't have the same level of detail and development as a lot of other works by Sanderson do, as I say it's an early work by him, but it still has really cool plot twists like a lot of Sanderson books do and it's very very fun very easy to get through. I would say that if you do like Sanderson's work then why not give it a go? It's a really short story, it won't take you long to read and it's free on his website so why not go and check it out. It's a nice thing to see if you're a bit of a super nerd like I am and you really like his work then 
going back and looking at where his beginnings in writing were, I think that's a really nice thing to see and so I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. Moving on to Defending Elism, which is by Sanderson as well, and this is a kind of sci-fi novelette that he wrote, so this one's quite a long one in comparison. I actually really enjoyed this story, it's very different to a lot of his work because most of his work is fantasy heavy rather than sci-fi heavy, but this book is way more set into sci-fi and it's space exploration and all of the cool ideas of living in space and what that would be like. It's focused around our main character who is called Jason and he is our main point of view and he works for the PC which is an acronym for the phone company which essentially rules everything in this new space world because they control all of the technology and they're very much in charge of everything. It is an intergalactic and space-based story, so we're not on modern day Earth or future Earth. We're in space on all sorts of entirely new worlds and planets and there are all sorts of really cool things thrown in. There are different aliens thrown in, which is really, really interesting to see and I enjoyed that a lot because I've not really read anything much with aliens and Sanderson did it pretty well. I enjoyed the way that he visualised all of the aliens and what came to mind when I was reading the writing it was really cool. I would say that this is a great little read. It's kind of a detective in space story. That's how I kind of looked at it. It only took me about 45 minutes to read. It's very, very short. It is longer than the other one, obviously, but it's still really, really short. And again, it is free to read on his website, so why not check it out? There are some really nice twists, and it is actually a pretty dense story, considering how short it is. It's very fleshed out, and it has a lot of background that we get to see slowly, and that is slowly revealed to really help us understand everything and really get a sense for what Sanderson was trying to achieve with the story. It does show that he can write sci-fi and it can be really interesting. I really enjoyed it and I would say that overall this is a great addition to the Sanderson collection. If you've not read it then definitely go and pick it up. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars so it's a really good book and I would highly recommend it. Next on his website there is also another short story which is called I Hate Dragons and this short story was actually part of a writing challenge that he set up. This is a story about dragons and Sanderson and dragons haven't really mixed before until I read this and I am very happy with the way that he mixed dragons and Sanderson writing. It was great. I have a bit of a soft spot for dragons anyway, I'm very much in love with dragons and the idea of these mythical, wonderful beasts that are so gargantuan and beautiful and majestic, so anything with dragons usually makes me happy, but the fact that Sanderson was writing about them, who is my favourite author, yep, pretty happy about that. So. Definitely this is a story I really enjoyed and I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. So basically this story is set around a young man who is called Skip. Everyone in the world basically has a knack or a couple of knacks and the knacks basically can be anything, they're like kind of magical sort of ideas where they have a little bit of something that's a little bit quirky and kind of defines their personality. And so Skip actually has two different really cool gnats. The first one is that he is very alluring to dragons and he basically smells delicious to dragons so they cannot resist him. At every opportunity they see him they want to dive down and eat him. So it's not a very practical thing to have but it makes for an interesting story. The other knack that Skip also has is that he can hear punctuation so people who are saying things, when they are saying things they are imagining in their head how it would be spelt even though they don't even realise it sometimes and he can basically hear the punctuation that they miss out or the spellings that they get incorrect and so on and I found that really entertaining, really fun. My mum is actually an editor so she's a bit of a freak over spelling and grammar and all that so for me that was quite a funny power because that's something I've always been brought up trying not to misspell everything or get grammar incorrect etc so that was pretty funny. I enjoyed his power a lot, I thought that was one of the most interesting things about the whole story. I really enjoyed this story, I thought that Skip was a really fun character, he was very sensible because he actually doesn't like the idea of being eaten by dragons and that is the main plot is that he wants to try and escape that life that he's been living. He, at the start of the story, is part of a band who try and take down dragons and capture them and kill them, but he wants to escape all that and it's basically the story of his life and how he slowly tries to break away. However, 
Only the first four chapters, I believe, are actually online and it ends on a very open ending that could easily be expanded upon or left as it is. And so one day there may or may not be more to it, I don't know, but I absolutely love the beginning of this story. I thought it was a great little novella in its own right. And it's just really fun, really fun to read about dragons from the point of view of Sanderson. And I hope that one day in the future, when he's finished all the millions of books that he's got planned, maybe he will return to this little cute dragon story, I don't know. But I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend that one to you guys. Because again, it's free on his website, so go and check it out. I gave this one a 4.5 stars, really loved it, thought it was excellent, and I would highly, highly recommend it. So those are four different novellas or short stories, whatever you want to call them, by Sanderson that I have read in the month of November, and I really enjoyed all of them. I thought they were all excellent and all individual in their own ways, but all had a feeling and a sense of Sanderson at various points throughout his life and at different series and standalones and all sorts of things. I enjoyed all of them in their own right and I think that they are all worth a read, especially if you like Sanderson or if you have read any of the series or you just want to try out a little bit of Sanderson. If you don't want to go into one of his huge books then why not have a look at I Hate Dragons because that was a pretty funny one or Defending Elysium. Both of those are really cool. So I would love to know what you guys think of them. If you haven't read them already, three of them are free on his website. Mitosis isn't free, but you can get it fairly cheap on Kindle if you want, like I did. Go and read them and then come back and tell me in the comments what you think of them, whether you like them or don't like them. As I say, the longest one only took me about 45 minutes to read, so they are not very long stories and you can get through them really fast. Let me know what you guys think of them all. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you all really soon in my next video. Bye!